Okay, so let's take a look at this patient's uh, scar. I've talked about scars in different locations before, and this scar is on her knee. This is a injury eight months ago from a jet ski injury, which is a pretty common injury in Miami. It's probably one going on right now. Um, but I'm not operating on her knee. We're doing a breast augmentation, but I just wanted to take the moment to show you this scar, and it's not a very good scar. You know, so this is her knee, this is her kneecap. you see her kneecap's moving a little bit here. And so she would have had some injury in this area that was then repaired with sutures. So these are the marks from her stitches that were in. Now, you have to think that whoever repaired this, you know, probably an emergency room physician or something, they most likely did not place a stitch here and then all the way over here. So what's happened is the stitches would, have, let's just say her injury was somewhere in here, the middle of this, her stitches probably would have been like here and here. But look at the distance that's, that stitch mark, that scar has traveled. And why has it traveled so far and why has this got this little what we call like a cigarette paper look to it where it's kind of all rolled up well the reason that this looks like that is because the scar has spread and why is it spread it's spread because number one she's young she's in her early 20s so her elastin and her collagen and her fibronectin and all of the other types of proteins that are in your body in her are very young and very strong and very healthy and very good. So if she loses a piece of that skin and then you bring those two edges of the skin together, there's a lot of stress and tension because those tissues are very strong and you've lost a piece of the skin. And so you're saying, Hey, come back and join and forget about that piece of skin. And it's the body's like, no, I'm going to go back to where I was. And so you get this widening of the scar into that cigarette paper and you get the displacement of these little tracks that are along her knee as they move outward. Unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do to really revise the scar. I, I'm always reminded by a old surgeon who was pretty famous and, and uh, they had asked him at the end of his career, you know, what was one of the things that sort of was the most spectacular thing that happened? And he mentioned rest reconstruction with free flaps and stuff, but they said, what was one of the things that didn't kind of go maybe as you thought it would? And he said, oh, scar revision because he said the results have been far more disappointed than, than he had anticipated. And so when they were sort of ushered in in the, maybe the 60s or 70s, people were really looking to do scar revisions. It just, it didn't really work particularly well in some areas. Don't get me wrong, scar revision is useful and we do it uh, frequently, but in some areas it's not that helpful. And I think this is an area that's just gonna be difficult to try to revise this scar because of her age because of the location on the lower extremity, they typically don't scar well in these areas. They're high skin tension. And when you combine naturally high skin tension because of its location and the high skin tension because of her age and her good health, then you get so much tension that it just spreads. So the best thing is really not to approach this through a scar revision pathway, but rather to focus on scar you know, trying to get the scar itself better. And so that's done with massage and with silicone and with pressure. And those are the three things that really make a scar better are massage, silicone, and pressure. And so that's what, you know, we would advise her to do now is not to give up on the scar because it's only eight months old. It takes a couple years for the scar to completely mature. So she could still impact the scar and get a better scar by doing the massage with silicone and applying pressure or some vibrational therapy.